Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Local Chat, episode 49. It is December 9th, 2021. We're coming at you pre-recorded because of the Game Awards tonight, but we're not going to let us stop us from doing what we're doing, which is talking about gaming news and all sorts of things. So joining me today, Ian Gibson, Kyle Bailey, um, the boys Who's are... the third? Boys the are, third guest. You I'm, pause there. Is there, oh, is there a special guest? Sorry, special guest Sean pause. Bean will be here soon. Mm. Listen, we got him. the game tomorrow, and every gamer in the world is so excited for these surprise exclusive reveals. So who's the third guest, Will? Is it Keanu Reeves, or is it Macaulay Culkin? Is Macaulay Culkin going to be there? <laughs> Who knows at this point? Jim Carrey's going to be there. Oh, so, Who knows? <laughs> my favorite thing was... Uh, Someone in the GameSpot Slack said, I thought you had to be vaccinated to go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is Jim Carrey anti-vax? I don't know if he's anti-vax, but he's at least crazy. He's he's weird about he's a little health weird, stuff. Yeah. I, um, I don't know about you guys, but I think what I am most excited about with the Game Awards this year is that I finally grew the balls to not watch that show that I hate watching. Um, so tomorrow... I'm going to be watching The Matrix Reloaded instead of the Game Awards, and I'm very excited for my rewatch. I'm I'm excited for you. I honestly, that movie has like a special place in my heart. It's not as I, good as the first one, but it is not bad as not as bad as a lot of people seem to remember it being. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that I turn around as well. I, not that I hated it the first time, but I, I thought it was okay. I'm I'm in my rewatch. I'm ready for the new one. I'm giving all three a fresh try. Yeah, some of them I liked, some of them I didn't. So I. Why why would I spend four hours watching Jeff Keighley hawk other people's overhyped video games when instead I can watch a, a quote unquote possible old movie classic? Who knows? It's going to be a better time anyways. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love you're, those you're old gonna... movie classics. <laughs> possible quote unquote movie classics. Um, it's 2002 classics. I've never I've only seen the first Matrix. It was in high school. Tell uh, us how you saw it. Because it's ridiculous, and you need to rewatch that movie. I didn't say I didn't need to rewatch it. I watched it on an iPod Touch. What? It's not my fault. It wasn't very good either. Um, I, I will say, I, for some reason, I thought you meant iPod Video or iPod Classic, and not an iPod Touch, which makes it slightly better <laughs> that it's a touch. Legitimately, exactly what I thought. Like it was just a classic yeah. iPod. It was like, hey, they can play video now. I was like, that's yeah. how you watched it. But really, fantastic movie. Anyways, should we uh, transition? I watched it on this one right here. See, that's not a <laughs> this bad screen. tiny little that's not, screen. That's not terrible. You, you could watch Dune on that, and Denis would be fine with yeah. it. Uh, no, I watched Dune on this iPod video. <laughs> that's what I watched <laughs> Dune on. A two and a half inch screen, yeah. <laughs> I actually used to watch the like, Office episodes on this. 240 by 480. Oh. This oh, thing's great. Boy. I, I've, uh, I've actually with the same along the same lines as like Game Boy mods. They sell mods for uh, like putting new batteries yeah, for... and stuff in these. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I also realized I got this engraved saying "Boldly go where no man has gone before," <laughs> because I was a big Star Trek I'll fan. Yeah. <laughs> well, <it's... laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> no man has ever gone there. Um, oh, oops, we've got some stuff coming up, but first we got to talk about the games we have been playing. Um, Ian and I have shockingly been playing similar video games, which is terrifying. It's true. That's not allowed. Uh, so I'll wait for one of those for you. Um, I've been playing more Fire Red. Not much more to talk about. Just go watch Poke Will. It's on the uh, on the channel. Go watch that. It's fun. Um, but honestly, streaming it is it's not ruining it. It's just making me <laughs> just like a it is, like an addict. And I just like because there's not enough Pokemon to catch outside the game. And I catch them too quickly, and then I have to wait. Uh, but yeah. I am really enjoying. And from like like a producer's behind the scenes angle, part of it is like we don't want to commit to thirty plus hours of streaming, so we can't stream all of it. But at the same time, we want to stream the good stuff, like the gym fights and stuff. So we're having to kind of tiptoe and self define these rules as to what will is allowed to play on stream and off stream. Uh, we're still trying to find that balance. And I, I fully agree because when I started playing it last weekend, I started on a Sunday and I played it for five and a half hours that day. Like I was just perfect. Lay on the couch, play it for a couple hours. And uh, I'm a, I, I totally feel your pain that we are not allowing you to do that. So <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's not so bad. And then um, I started Halo Infinite today. Uh, <clears throat> downloaded that Same-sies. at 1 p.m. Sat on the couch <laughs> debating whether or not I should just not do work and play it. And I was a good boy and I waited till like 15 minutes before work ended and started playing it. <laughs> um, so I'm on mission two. I haven't gotten to like the open world part of it yet. Um, I played it through about half the mission uh, and then I remembered that you can't replay missions in this game without starting the game over because um, they haven't added that in yet. Which is, which is crazy. And I missed a <laughs> skull, which annoyed my brain. So I was about Ugh. 15 minutes into the mission. So I, and, and, and on top of that, it wasn't just that. It was the skull was in the room I was looking for it in. And was, I it, was, like, was it the elevator room? It was the, the no. The, it's the room with the rising cargo boxes or, on the side. Yeah, the, the, yeah. I, I just call them elevators. Yeah. Um, um, I so I downloaded it. I did exactly what you did. I waited until it was like the end of my workday, and then um, I was I'm streaming it tonight, so I wanted to make sure that it would play. Okay, so I went through the whole first mission and then just didn't do the last like little quick time thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I was surprised that I found that skull because I'm terrible at finding skulls. Like I'm just really really bad at it. Um, but yeah, I, I was like, this seems like a place where they would hide it. So I like jumped up. I was like, I don't see it on this side. Let me check the other side. And it was there. Yeah. Like audio logs and stuff. I don't care about, but skulls actively add modifiers to the game and like, will change it as you go through mm. and Ian deletes his video. Uh, but I would, <laughs> I would definitely like to, <laughs> <laughs> Ian's found the space bar uh, for all you the, uh, video it's watchers. Not, it's a completely different combination that for some reason <laughs> does that. Does that. <laughs> Sorry. That's anyways. okay. Um, anyway, so the skulls like can add mo- modifiers and stuff. And I was like, if I eventually want all of these, I don't want to restart the game. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to look them up in each mission, know where I have to stop to start looking for it. Uh, just do it one so, time through. Rather yeah, than... just do it one time through. So I'm Let on the second question. mission. Yes. Halo Infinite. So my previous understanding of skulls is they just uh, unlock like extra bonus difficulty modifiers. Is it doing the same thing in Halo Infinite and or is there any other gameplay purpose and or why why should I care about skulls? It's just like fun little little like the, the one skull that we always play with when, when me and my friend play is uh, headshots is the little like cheering party? sound yeah the birthday, birthday party, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's the best it's just like a little thing so as long as i find stuff like that i, I i'm happy i don't necessarily need to find all of them um mm-hmm. but they're important to some people because it's like a tradition at this point i guess yeah and okay uh, i just I, wanted to make sure that when i ignore them it's not a problem <laughs> no you're fine. yeah you just won't okay. be able to like not you won't be able to do stuff but like you want to mess around. I won't be able to have fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's also part of like in Halo 2, I remember spending hours like going outside levels, trying to find skulls and all that sort of stuff. So um, like, uh, yeah, it, it was it's more of like that sort of thing that Halo is always you're trying to get out of bounds out of the map. There's a couple of Halo yeah. 2 maps I can go back no matter what. No matter who I'm playing Delta Halo with or what it's for, I will go outside the map and just skip sections because I just remember it from childhood and it's so much fun. Mm. Um, so that's kind of what it is. And also part of it was like work related. I didn't want someone being like, hey, can you go try to recreate this cool Halo glitch? You need this skull. Oh, you have to restart the game to get that skull. Like, Even if at that point they might have added replaying mission. <laughs> anyway anyways i'm having a blast with it it's running at 60 frames per second uh and Ooh. it is 4k um I, mm-hmm. the, the are you performance on are you, you're mode? pc right no i'm on my series x, oh, it's series um, x. Okay. it wouldn't let me change the graphic mode and i looked it up and i got mixed results so what i could tell is the xbox series x doesn't have the option to change graphical modes because it just runs everything at 4k 60 um But if you have 120 hertz TV, you can switch it to performance and it will do adaptive resolution 120. uh, So that that's not I don't I don't think that's true. It's per game, but the 120 hertz mode will only unlock if you have that TV. So it's not it's not quite saying that it won't let you change graphics modes. It's that it won't let you switch to a 120 hertz mode if you don't have a 120 hertz TV, because there are other Series X games where I have picked you know, performance where I picked 30 or 60 FPS, etc. Right. So there's an option that says 
choose between quality and performance, and it's just grayed out. You can't even click. That's interesting. Yeah, but that's 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 a Halo Infinite thing. That's not a console thing, though. Right. I'm talking about Halo Infinite. So in Halo but you Infinite, said, you said you said Xbox won't let you change, and that's not true. Yeah, I, I mean in but, Halo Infinite, he, I'm on the Xbox. They saying... won't let me change it. Yeah, Halo it's grayed out regardless. Like, yeah, but I'm just saying that's that's not an Xbox thing. That's a Halo Infinite thing. That is not a that's not the console level. Wait, yeah. but then why why is it grayed out? Because because Halo Infinite is tying performance to 120 hertz, and the console doesn't allow 120 hertz unless you're cooked connected to 120 hertz TV. So it's not really quality and performance. It's normal or 120 hertz mode. Okay. Whereas other games, when they do quality performance, it's like, do you want ray tracing 30 FPS or do you want non ray tracing 60 FPS? And that's that's normally the quality performance divide, which you can switch between. Yeah. So uh, it's it's Halo Infinite misnaming it. Basically, it's I would say, look at that toggle, not as quality performance. It's do you want 120 hertz or not? But and I, you're not I don't allowed to switch if, to it because you don't have that TV. I don't know if performance mode is still 4K, though, with 120. Yeah, but the point is. If your TV doesn't support 120 hertz, you can't switch to it anyways, period. Yeah, okay. So inside Halo Infinite, I couldn't switch to it. But the people on the internet still weren't sure if that was it. Because some people were saying they turned off HDR and they were able to change it. So I don't actually know. Um, that's just, I got like 14 different results when I yeah, Googled it. Digital, and it was all about multiplayer anyways. So, yeah. Digital, digital Foundry's video didn't specify anything about needing 120 hertz TV to switch between them. Um, which is interesting because that seems like it would be a pretty big point of. Yeah, so like, it could just. I yeah. saw people talking about like resetting their Xboxes and it got grayed out. So it could just be grayed out for a completely different reason. Uh, I don't know, but that was one of the reasons I read and people were like rallying behind that. So who knows? Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on PC and I mentioned Digital Foundry already, but their recommended video settings for PC are perfect. Great. Nice. nice. It, it runs really, really well with their recommended settings. Although it is super annoying. Like some of this, like if you sit down and watch, they have like two really long videos that go super in depth as they normally do um, about some of the weird things that are happening in the game that they're like, why is this happening? Like, why is this this way? Um, and playing with it, knowing that those things are happening is super annoying. Like all the, the facial animations are done at 30 FPS rather than 60 FPS. Oh. All, the, all the cinematics um, are, they stutter. Like, like it's not smooth. So it, I, I like, had I not watched that video, I would have been like, there's something wrong with my PC. Like it's, it's stuttering or something. And they're like, no, it's the game. <laughs> it's it's not yeah. you. It's the game. There's the second um, yeah. uh, the second mission. At one point, you're in this place with things spinning around you, and it looks great and everything. And then it cuts to the cinematic, and it shows them in the background, and you see them just tick ticking across. And I was like, yeah. it's like <laughs> it's that 24 frames a second thing. And I was like, oh no, oh no. But uh, it's it's yeah. crazy to me that they they specifically said that 343 reached out to them saying that thank you for letting us know because now we're going to fix that and it's like that's a that's a cinematic like how are how are you not noticing this in a cinematic that you did no, i guarantee you people noticed it and they just went ah nobody cares we'll get to eventually maybe it's a p4 <laughs> in the jira backlog and the digital foundry complains about it and they go oh, oh we God, misjudged man. that let's bump that up let's put that in the next sprint <laughs> yeah um not to yeah. jump to like news or anything but it was interesting in a couple of those halo infinite articles that came out this week them talking about how one of the reasons that Halo demo that performed so poorly got out was people were working from home and different people's monitors were showing different like color versions, saturation, all that sort of stuff across the team. Mm -hmm. So no one person, you weren't at an office all looking at the same monitor being like, yeah, this looks great. It was like a hundred different people saying, yeah, this looks great. No, this doesn't. Yes, this looks great. And then... <laughs> To remedy that, sounds that. like a bad excuse. Yeah, I was gonna say that sounds. That it sounds wasn't colors. It was so like weird. textures and lighting. Yeah. Yeah. So to remedy that afterwards, they had a specific like TV at the office that they had people were able to like zoom into and like color grade <laughs> their monitors to like oh, match gosh. and like resolution their monitors to match it, so everyone oh, could man. actually see the same thing. I just thought that was very funny. Um, yeah, they workaround. they brought up the. You, that that just seems so weird to, like that's such a strange reason to give because like i can't imagine most 
like Ian, you said it, it was a texture thing. Like everyone saw that video yeah. and they're like, why are these textures so like low grade? Like it, and also, it didn't also seem... the lighting, the lighting was like yeah. absolutely it was slash super, really it was super flat. Like everything was yeah. really flat. And it's funny you like you bring that back up because in the 2019 uh, trailer that they released, the the one before the the bad one, the E3 one, where it showcases basically the, be the beginning with the pilot. Um, and yeah. I think that just that his name is just the pilot. Um, that trailer looks better than the game does. Like the lighting in it is like way more defined. It's got a lot more contrast. Yeah. His eyes don't look dead in the game. His eyes are just like super flat. Like it just, I don't, they made, they made some really weird choices with like, not just the lighting, but there's like a haze yeah. that sort of goes over everything. And it, I, I don't yeah. like it. It's really weird because say what you want about Halo 4 and Halo 5. Those games looked pretty good yeah like, they looked really they looked, good they yeah. look really especially the cinematics like they look great and it, it, um df said it too but I, I have to agree with them where they're like this game it, it feels like it's it's drawing more power from your system than what the visuals representing it would have you believe like yeah. it, it just doesn't seem like it's like really like this game is pulling this much from my pc and like needs this much performance because it doesn't look that great yeah. um but I'm 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 curious to see what they do with some patches. But otherwise, it's it's running great on my PC. Yeah, I'm glad it didn't come out last year. Um, yeah, yeah. By all accounts, it would have been two two. It would have been one third of the game it is now would have come out last year, yeah. which is wild to me. Um. So yeah, I played a bunch. Uh, maybe an hour of Halo Infinite today. Uh, and then um. Pokemon Fire Red and one other game, but I'll let Ian talk about that game. Ian, what games have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing some Pokemon Fire Red. Um, I'll stall a little bit before we get to the other game. I I just uh, I've, I've been playing Pokemon Fire Red and I realize what I really, really like about it outside of the game itself is that I have an upcoming trip and this is my travel game. And I love that so much. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like travel game, the game you pick to yeah. travel with. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I'm excited because I got to go on a plane. I'll be in an airport for a little bit. And I wanted a game to play. And I was worried. I was like, you know, should I start it? Should I not start it? When should I start it? I want to be interested in it while I'm in the plane, while I'm on the airport. And I feel like I timed it just right. I've got like five of the eight badges. I'm probably on like the 30 percent left downhill run to the end and i'm just ready to just chill out play that game listen to some podcasts while i'm doing it and just travel um and i just man i just love travel games you guys got any got any really good travel game stories um i played breath of the wild on my way to tokyo and it was really fun That's um cool. we tried to do we tried to do uh mario kart 8 on the way over there and we couldn't get it to, to sync up on the plane um but uh yeah i mean stuff i i like a game i can just sink into especially when traveling because it's like you're stuck yeah. in one spot like especially if there's it's weird this is a weird thing to bring up but like the white noise of being in a plane like you just put your headphones on and it's just like okay i'm like fully yeah. in this i'm it's, in this yeah nice. uh, yeah I what play, about you will as a kid i played a lot of game boy game like i remember being super mario world um while <clears throat> in a car trip um but uh, usually for flying, I read more than I play game. Um, I'll like pick up a game for a That's little fair. bit, uh, but nothing that I really sink my teeth into. Usually, I, usually I use the time to read. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I um, I remember 2019, 2020, I was doing a lot of business trips. I usually had like at least one trip a month and um, it I would always like pick up either a new 3DS or a new switch game right before I left. So I remember like playing all through Golf Story one trip. I remember another trip. Um, it started the day that Fire Emblem, uh, Fire Emblem Conquest, the birth conquest, those two, they, they came out. And so like the entire four or five day trip, I barely had to work. It was over a weekend. And so I just sat in the hotel room playing that game over and over. <laughs> um, so just like like I just love it when it fits just perfectly it's like i'm on vacation i get to relax and i'm gonna have this downtime just find the perfect game to sink into i will say sometimes that goes wrong like one time i um i rented hyrule warriors oh. off of gamefly which is like the uh 
Uso. Oh shoot, what are those? Yeah, what what are the what's that what's that series usually called? Dragon Heroes or something? Knights, uh... Yes. I know I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and it's basically the Zelda version of that. And I was like, all right, let's give this a shot on the switch. And I booted it up in the airport before I left. And Dynasty I booted Warriors. it down about Dynasty, Dynasty Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. I booted up in the <laughs> airport before we left. And I shut the console down 20 minutes later and I didn't play it for the rest of the trip. <laughs> that was my guess. Yeah, so it's a gamble. But anyways, yeah, I'm really enjoying Pokemon. Um, the other game I've played about 40, 45 minutes of. I just picked it up based off of a lot of the buzz around it is uh, X01. This is a Game Pass game. I've been playing it on the console. Um, it's uh, just to just give you a briefer. It's it's definitely an indie game. It's trying to be very minimalistic, but also trying to tell a story. You're basically controlling this craft and you're going through and you're you're traveling through these empty worlds, these empty, weird planets. And the whole concept is that it's kind of like tribes ascend your skiing where you can you can make yourself heavy to fall fast. And then you want to go down slopes to pick up speed and then you have a glide mode. So it's all about, you know, momentum up, down momentum to get carry yourself forward. Well, I'm curious uh, how far how much have you played and how are you how are you liking it? Uh, so I've beaten it. I played through all of it. Um, sad, Sunday when I was sick from the booster. So I think I at least I finished it Sunday. I think I started it Saturday. Um, I enjoyed the experience of playing that game. I thought it had a lot of fun things to offer. Uh, I thought the ending was interesting. I also didn't... It, 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 I was in a stage of the ending where there was no pausing, there was nothing, and I didn't know if I just had to turn the game off or not. Um, <laughs> so I don't actually know if it ended... Um, but I was I was like trying to get close because I saw something in the distance. So I was like, oh, I'll try to fly towards that. And then I clearly wasn't getting closer. And I turned around. I was like, let me try flying towards the other thing. And there, you couldn't pause the game or anything. So I, I, I don't know. I turned it off. Um, I enjoyed the game. There were It had a really good flow to it. There were too many times where I could see how the developer intended you to go. And it just was like they must have played it a lot because... Half the time, I yeah. could not line things up perfectly to get rocketed through things, or uh, line. I like I got stuck in geometry a couple times. And you kind of have to like wiggle, jump your way out. Um, yeah, there was a really good moment uh, in it on one of the planets where they kind of like force some things to you and like turn things off, and it's like a struggle. And it's it. I thought that really paid off well. It was it was pretty cool because I was like, is this supposed to happen? Did I mess up? uh overall i thought it was good but um yeah I, what was the total I, uh what was the total play time for you i want to say like four or five hours no Whoa. maybe maybe two hours two to three okay i'm very bad with I, measuring time because <laughs> like like i said i'm 45 50 minutes in and did you guys ever play tribes or tribes ascend the one uh the the more recent one um i've, I've played tr one of the tribes it, but it i don't think i played of, the recent one is it tiny bird was the iphone game where you would hold down <laughs> and it would I mean flappy would, bird not, no not flappy bird if oh. it was flappy bird i would have said flappy bird oh i'm sorry i just assumed you were an idiot that would say the wrong thing mm -hmm. um, I think it's, don't tiny wings i think it was called tiny wings Flat anyways um it's just it's just I the problem it. i'm having is i i love tribes ascend um mostly because of the skiing like well actually there's a lot of fantastic things about that game but the skiing is really good and the skiing is the concept of you can basically turn on like zero friction going down a hill and gain a lot of speed so you would be going like if you were good at the game you could get up to like 300 kph in a level so imagine you're in an fps in a decent sized map and it's you know a 16 or 32 player match and people are going around at 300 kph and it's capture the flag it's Folks, it's capture the flag and the flags are partially in the open. So you would just have people, you would just have people zooming through at 300 kph, just boom, they have the flag. And then they would like go around the map at 300 kph. And then there's chasers, there's chasers. If your job is a chaser, then you stand by your flag, but you're not actually standing. You're, you're zooping the hills. So if somebody comes through at 300 kph and grabs your flag, then you take off after them because you've already got the momentum. And then there's tanks who literally just sit on the flag and their whole purpose is if somebody comes through at 300 kph and they hit you that they stop on the spot and then you kill them. Tribes Ascend was so good because you're going so fast. And the problem I have with X01 is the mechanics of the skiing 
they don't feel as good. They don't feel as good as they did in Tribes Ascent. So it has enough of that where you're like, I got to do the momentum. I'm going to do like a dive and whoa, I'm going to swoop through this hill and hit the controls just right. So it shoots me off really fast, but it doesn't feel as good. And, and it's also it's a little wonky, the graphics. I don't know if you've noticed, but like if you turn the camera, it like does a slight hitching and there's screen tearing. Yes, and there's the a textures, lot of screen tearing. Yeah, and then like like there's like an ocean level, and when you're really high up in the ocean level and you look down at the ocean, it just looks like water tiles because the textures are just super heavily tiled. And again, I think it's an indie game. I think it's just one person who made it, and I understand those, but it's also like it, it it's not quite there yet. Um, and so I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up again because the the core mechanic just doesn't feel good enough. The one thing I will say though is that Tribes Ascent is amazing. The second thing I will say, though, is that the storytelling is really good. I don't know what's going on, but they're like giving you hints of this thing. There's like weird flashbacks. There's weird, like mysterious voices talking yeah. about things. There's like and and uh, I'll give you an example, like five minutes into the game, you're going around this level and all of a sudden it starts to storm and this lightning bolt hits. And when the lightning bolts hits, you just see a picture of astronauts for a split second. Like it fills the whole screen and then it goes away and you're just like. What just happened? Like they they have me gripped on the story so much that I'm considering continuing to play it, even though I don't really enjoy the mechanic. So yeah, that's yeah. XO one. I think I think it's I think it's I think they should be lauded for trying something different and doing something weird here. Also, I I think there's multiplayer in this, isn't there? Is is, is there? that the impression you got? I think I it's know. journey multiplayer where there's really? where you have other people. Oh, is that where the people I was seeing? I think it is. I'm trying to catch them. Yeah, where, where basically you're playing in the oh. game and then somebody else drops in and they're playing the game at the same time. So if you happen to yeah. be in the area, which well, is kind of cool. I checked my so. uh, Xbox stats. Uh, I played it for two hours and 28 minutes. Uh, 170 gamer score. I will point out, though, I do not have the achievement for complete the game. So <laughs> um, I'm so confused because I'm pretty sure it was over. Um, but I will also say... There's an achievement for completing the game in 180 minutes, and there's an achievement for completing the game in 60 minutes. So I I must have just beaten it. I must have been on the last thing. I just never, like, the whole ending happened in front of me. I, I, I watched, like, the resolution of the story happen, but I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just... I'm just looking this up on the Xbox app, um, which is garbage, by the way. Yes. Um, it just yeah. says single player, but then it also says cloud enabled. So I'm not sure if that means. Yeah. So I think it's like the journey thing where you don't play together, but you can see okay. each other. Yeah. Okay. Like they, they hop in your world. Gotcha. And I, the only reason why, like, like when they first come in, there's like, you can tell it's another object of yours moving around. Mm. But the reason that makes me think it is multiplayer versus them just like trying to be like, oh, there's other NPCs or whatever, is that in one of them, somebody was just stopped. Like they just stopped on the hill. <laughs> like it was like somebody put the controller down and walked away for 20 minutes. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> makes me think it's that they, they put other players in your world at the same time. What is, is um, it asynchronous multiplayer? I'm trying to remember what that's called. Um, no, it's 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 just like it's like very non-interactive. Yeah, what's yeah, it called for journey? I bet. I think it's journey. called journey multiplayer. Right. Journey.com slash multiplayer. Yeah, I, I would say if 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 you like the look of it, if you like anything about skiing and tribes or if any of this is interesting to you, yeah, give it a shot. It's a Game Pass game. It's very short. You can finish it. I just I think for me, I'm a little disappointed because I was seeing people on Twitter talking about how this game is amazing and it's people were like inscriptions amazing xo one is also on my game of the year list and i was like and then people describing it as the way they describe the mechanics i'm like oh that's tribe skiing i love tribe skiing and it's very close to that so i think i got my hopes up too high so if you're listening and you're interested don't get your hopes up too high this game sucks but maybe you should play it and be pleasantly surprised Thank you. That was from our presenter, Ian, um, for X01. Um, next up, we've got Kyle talking about all sorts of games. Uh, he's going to kick it off here in just a second. <laughs> Action. Okay, great. Uh, we already talked about the one game, Halo Infinite. Um, okay, I, why did you wait? I don't know. I was doing okay. a weird I was, I, thought, I thought you were, yeah, I thought you were going to like, transition <laughs> 
You can't cut that. It's got to stay in there. It's got to stay in for there. Like, for half a second, I was like, does he have a music cue, like, ready to go for I me? Thought, no. Specifically? I, I was getting I really excited. I thought doing a fake radio ad, so that's why I paused. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, no, I'll just... <laughs> just yep, you know. have to do, like, a, a 1940s oh, radio voice, though. It has to be like, have you heard the new X01 on the Microsoft Store? It's <laughs> got popcorn like Jimmy's got babies. <laughs> And next up, it's Kyle with his <laughs> video games of the week. Yeah, Halo Infinite, uh, we already talked about. Red Dead, we talked about the last time I did this. Um, I, I'm just playing through it again because I'm stuck. I love this story. I mean, say Having what you want about. on you? About, no, it, it hasn't crashed on Story's you. good. Well, I yeah. was Story's watching your, your stream when it ended up. Uh, I, 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 that was my fault. <laughs> um, I was trying to switch something on OBS and I clicked out, and then if you alt tab that game while, or at least on my oh. computer while you're streaming, it like completely hangs. So oh. it was actually still playing in the background. I just couldn't do like my com whole computer froze up. So because I was, was, I was, it was my fault. I was exporting our Twitch videos, and I was like, oh, I'll export Kyle's for him. And I look at it, I like hit like, export, and I was like, wait, it's only thirty minutes. So I like yeah. look into it, and I like scrub to the end, and it's just you saying goodbye. I was like, oh no, did something happen? And I scrub back, and I just see the game like frozen, and you very confused, and you're just like, um, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I, I, was like uh, I, I couldn't um control alt delete out of it. I couldn't task manager yeah. in the process. That's it was wild. Really, really weird. Um, that is wild. And, but but then like it was just this monitor and this monitor over here was perfectly fine. Like I could do everything yeah. I needed to. I was like, what the heck's going on? So yeah, That's cool. but I haven't had any crashes since. So <laughs> probably because I haven't been streaming it. But yeah, um, great story. Uh, say what you want about Rockstar's uh, game animations for every single thing in the entire world mentality. Right. Um, but I, I love that story. I think it's so good. Okay. I like I like the Cuba sections. There, I said it. The, the Cuba they, sections. They're is it bad. Cuba? They're bad. It's Cuba, right? Or it's, is it it's Havana? Cuba? Like specifically Havana? Or is it something else? I don't remember. And I I Is it a I fake island? It is. is it not Cuba? It might it, not. It be. is a fake island. It's definitely a fake island, but what is it modeled after is the question. So they I mean, I they think it's Cuba. They mention in actually one of the cinematics where you go into uh Saint Denis and you uh, you meet the mayor. He's talking to someone, and they reference the fact that he's like a, a generalissimo or whatever they call him, and he has an island off the coast. And I think that's where they send you. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. It's it's a Guarma is a tropical Guarma. island off Guarma. of Cuba, off of Cuba. Yeah. So it's a fake that's island a... off of Cuba. Guarma. Okay. That's my. Guarma. It's a bad. It's a bad. It's a bad segment. It's, it's a bad. really. It's a weird tangent today. it is a weird tangent but i i liked it like for a second there i was like this game is like it's not like a Asa it's like assassin's creed this game became assassin's creed like the call of duty chapter in the new resident evil assassin's yeah. cowboy like, i wasn't i i i remember i wasn't too hot on that game and we did like our first impressions video of it and i was like i'm not too crazy about it but i'm i'm excited for some like give me some big action pieces you know i'm ready for it and then like the whole island segment came, which is just like an extended action sequence, like linear thing. And yeah. I played through it and I was like, yeah, I think I'm completely done with this game. Like, I'm still going to finish it. But there is like this is what I wanted and it's still not feeling good. So <laughs> I think it's I think it's because all the action scenes just feel the same. Yeah, Every, yes, everything is ex exactly the same. And it's like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love like shooting people with my revolver, um, which is great. But it, if every presentation of this is an action scene, here's a little bit of story. Here's an action scene. If every time we go into that action, action scene segment, I'm like, we've done this already and there's nothing new. Like the stuff yeah. at the beginning actually felt different because it's like, hey, rob this train. And it's like, OK, yep. great. And then everything yeah. else is like, hey, go here, kill these people. Go here, kill these people. Go here, kill these people. And it's just like, OK, I yep. get it. That um, Braithwaite Mansion burning, good scene. Oh. That is that's, good that's scene, incredible. Yeah. That's an incredible scene. I want this, more missions like that tied yeah. into story. They're dynamic. They're weird. You know, like the drunk mission. Those yeah. are great. <laughs> that one was it's just. Okay. There's just way too many missions like you're talking about that are just very vanilla kill, escape, yeah. etc. Yeah. And I, I also think they took a lot of like not risks, but they took weird directions with stuff. Like like the kid being kidnapped is never a thing you would think. 
like would like a G, is yeah. a gta mission you know it's not like yeah. get the drugs and stuff like all that sort of different missions i thought were are, were well, well structured it feels written. it's it's funny you bring that up specifically because that opens up the entire like next two chapters of the of the story but it feels so organic because it's like okay we have to go get this kid from the braithwaites braithwaites you know you you kill everyone there um you burn the house down and then you're pretty much done with that section of the map and then you just move on to saint denis and then it's like hey here's new person new person new person here's some new places you can go and then you go to guarma which you know you can say what you want about guarma but it is something different from the normal map yeah. and it, it it just organically feels like the story sort of led them that way and as you play it i think it feels pretty good but yeah action set pieces in that game are not after like the first 20 percent, 30 percent. it's like just the same stuff yeah yeah um awesome i'm glad you've been playing that i've there's part of me that wants to go play it again i just I don't know. i don't have the time uh, no yeah, i do want to play it again just do not have that kind of time um folks uh, it's time to move over to the news section which means we get to play the news theme and hopefully nail the timing on it um so i'm just gonna clap here's the news we're talking about news it's gaming news what's up news and it's time for the news because the news theme just played um Guys, did you know the hottest thing right now is that you could own a helmet that has the number 69 on it in Ghost Recon yeah. Breakpoint. Um, yeah. Ubisoft, Ubi, Ubisoft announced Quartz, their blockchain-powered NFT cosmetic system. Um, yeah. Yeah, you'll be able to get uh. items inside of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, from what I gathered from the awesome trailer, they have different, they're numbered, so you get a specific number. Um, and there I just, cool I things. was, wait, let me finish cool my bit first. Um, I just want to say, I want to know if this, I'm predicting this now, actually. I don't even want to know. I'm predicting that every item that is numbered past 70, the 69 and the possibly the 420 that's a separate thing will be worth more money in whatever market they are sold in i guarantee yeah. Yeah. guarantee um and on top of that ian you can go next but i feel like this whole thing is just the steam trading marketplace but with nfts added to it yeah i like like when i i was very down on this and then i watched the trailer and i said you know what there's actually some really cool ideas in here. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll start on a positive here. I don't really get cosmetics in games except for stuff that looks really cool. But then it's also a little concerning because it's like, <laughs> oh, I got this really cool thing. But there's 12 other people with it. And we're all running around with it. So if there was like actually individualized cosmetics and like they were talking about how some of these NFT items they're all in-game cosmetic items, but they are going to be either one of one or one of very limited numbers, you know, a couple hundred, let's say. They're going to have unique colors. They're going to have unique designs. They're Each one's going to have a number stamped on it. So like in your example, if you buy helmet number 69 of 400, it's going to have 69 stamped into the physical item as well as other things. You know, they may even potentially in the future, like put your username in the helmet. Like if you had a gun that had your name along the side of it stamped into with like the actual texture model of the thing, that's pretty neat. But you don't need NFT or blockchain to do any of this. You could totally just do this with the generic, you know, cosmetic ownership system with these are items. Your account has access to them. Your account does not. You don't need the blockchain. They're doing that simply for buzzword Oh, yeah. And 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 the the big problem with the blockchain is that it's just so energy hungry. Even using this proof of stake uh, method that they're using, which is different from proof of work, which is less energy intensive, it still requires energy to maintain the blockchain. And there's an energy cost every time you have to check the blockchain to verify somebody owns an item versus just hitting a row in a database saying, "Do they have access to this item?" Yes. And this is just they did not have to do this as blockchain. You know, I understand. Everybody wants cosmetics. Everybody wants microtransactions. And I think it's cool to have these microtransactions be much more customized and unique to the players who do want to spend money on that. 
but it doesn't need to be blockchain NFT. Just don't do it. Don't do yeah, it. And I, I also, as a side note, I hope whoever has to export the individually numbered items just has a, a quick hotkey to do that, and they're not export, yeah. delete, change to 70, <laughs> export, change yeah. to 71. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was also some controversy because somebody looked into the terms and restrictions behind this. And it's not even a good NFT or a good blockchain because the whole thing about a blockchain is that it's, or at least the core idea behind it is that it's decentralized. Yeah. Anybody can check the blockchain to verify certain things and all transactions are public. Um, and then the other thing about the NFT is that you you own the item or at least you have some, some semblance of possession or ownership over it. Not necessarily the original item, but like a stake, a claim, et cetera. Right. There, there, there are terms in this like, hey, you own this NFT, but you are not allowed to modify it. You're not allowed to change it. You're not allowed to make any content with it in there visually uh, with a visual representation of it. You can't make screenshots. You can't make a poster with what? it on there. You can't trade it. You can't sell it except within the system. It, like all these restrictions on this, that is basically just th this is not this is not blockchain NFT it's other like than the tech they're yeah. using. You because can't to, even prove that you own it. Because <laughs> to me, this NFT makes more sense than a f than a piece of art, uh, like a yes. 2D image, because screenshots. Like this one, you get to wear on your character. Um, I mean, and for someone else to wear it in the game where it's applicable, they would have to own it. Versus art, to hang it on my wall, all I need to do is screenshot and print it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, I get that whole section of this. Um, and I also get making cosmetics nfts because it's not like what that horrendous thing that guy described where only one person owns mario and mario kart and all that sort yeah. of stuff which would be wild so like this stuff makes sense to me I, I i think i agree with you cosmetics outside the realm of making your character look cooler cosmetics have never made sense to me because uh i I, I also don't care what my stuff looks like in a game and that sort of stuff. Like, and I don't yeah. own that stuff and all the stuff. But so if there's a way to be like, Hey, will you actually own this thing in this video game? And, uh, if the servers ever shut down, they send you whatever that item is worth. Not that this is what Ubisoft's doing, but like that sort of like physical grasp on a digital medium. I think that is really cool. Um, so I think I'm kind of like you where when this was announced, you're like, Oh gosh, and then kind of looking into it a little bit more, you're like, you know, they could pull this off. But then it's, oh, gosh, again, with what you're saying, where it's not quite yeah. lined out like a proper NFT sort of there, thing. There, so. Yeah, there is there is nothing here that explicitly requires it be either blockchain or NFT. And they they, right. they don't need to use that tech. They're just using it for buzzwords, which is which is a problem, but it's not a huge problem. But the bigger problem is that. They're wasting dev resources and they are wasting, you know, energy resources, keeping this expensive energy intensive tech running just so they can say they have the buzzword implemented. Just do it. Just do it normally. Just do it normally. It's exactly like you said. It's Steam training cards. They're, yeah. they're already out there. Just do it. Normally. You don't need to do this as as blockchain NFT. Um, yeah, that's wild. Uh, moving on. Next thing in the news pipeline, um, PlayStation. This is a report, right? The report from Jason Trier Bloomberg that PlayStation is working on their Xbox Game Pass retort. Uh, it is codenamed Spartacus. It will allow PlayStation owners to pay a monthly fee for access to a catalog of modern and classic games uh, from the PlayStation catalog. Um, it's supposed to include PS1, PS2, 3, and PSP, not the Vita. Um, <laughs> apparently, they want to retain the PlayStation Plus branding and phase out PlayStation Now. Um, I, I did an Good. article at work for this, so that's why I know all this off the top <laughs> of my head. Um, and there's going to be three tiers, uh, kind of like, I guess game pass is tiered now that I think about it. Cause there's ultimate, mm. but it's not really yeah. tiered. Cause, cause uh, like, they always yeah. push you towards ultimate. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a yeah. bundle. Uh, so yeah. there, uh, does this outline the tiers? All right. I've never, never seen this article. Cause I, I did my own. Um, but there was supposed to be tier one was like the basic Sony access to online and stuff. Tier two was, um, demos, I think extended demos and stuff. And then tier three is like all the streaming games, uh, you get the catalog and all that sort of stuff. So interesting to see, um, Sony trying to 
uh, switch over to this Xbox method. Um, a couple of uh, retorts I saw to it, it's my favorite word today, were, <laughs> I, I don't know if uh, they were saying if Sony has the capital to lose out on a lot of sales up front, um, but also Sony, n- nothing in this report sales is... Sales of what? Sales they of the games they don't really that they support... would have... Yeah, I know. No, but they don't um, support backwards compatibility, no. so nobody's buying PlayStation 1, 2, or 3 games from Sony, so that is such a crap thing to say, you know? No, uh, but they're saying sales, if they were to copy Xbox whole cloth and do first-party um, Sony games, which I don't think you're, they're you're going to do... They... They would have to build up subscribers before they saw a return, basically. Right. Before they were like, hey, you get access. If you pay for this tier, you get Sony first party day one, like Xbox does. I don't Mm. think they're going to even include that. Maybe not at all, but that's definitely not going to be their day one. I I mean, that's Microsoft's Um, got a lot of money. They could. They could. Uh, Because like, like, you know, we don't know the financials, but we know that Game Pass has... I think last count I saw a year ago, it's it's 15 million active Game Pass subscribers. It's got to be more than that by now. So I I don't know for sure that they are making a profit, but I would not be surprised if they are making a profit off of Game Pass. And I think Sony, Sony has a bigger fan base than Xbox right now. They just do because of coming off of the success of the PS3, PS4. And so if they said, hey, you don't have to buy these exclusives anymore. You just got to pay 15 bucks a month for this library. Yeah. I guarantee you they would they would hit that 15 mil number plus even quicker. Yeah. Um. So Xbox Game Pass, according to Microsoft earnings, Q2 2021 earnings call uh, had 18 million. Was the last official reported. A and that was a almost lot. a year ago. Or actually Q2. So six months ago. Um, I yeah. think they'll be fine. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. Um, I- I'm not. Uh, there's so many PS1, 2, and 3 games I either have never played or played briefly or I own on the shelf over there and have never put them into my consoles because they're all packed away. So being able to access that sort of stuff not on a crappy PS1 Nintendo yep. ripoff uh, would be really cool. Um, kind of along the lines of this, not to deviate too much, but I did send this to Ian to get today. Um I've, this was mentioned on the next Lander pro- podcast though what is it the we see i can't remember what it's called but anyways yeah. this guy made a um a raspberry sized raspberry pi sized computer that basically runs windows 98 and you can just natively play uh like old pc games off of it i guess this opened a whole new world to me because there's manufacturer manufacturers who make single board computers or companies that still run all of their programs on Windows 98 and DOS. Like, they just yeah. make single-chip solutions for that, and I never knew that existed. I would, um, I would buy that just to play Chips Challenge. Oh, I yeah. Oh. Chips Challenge on MS-DOS. Oh, Kyle, Chips Challenge is on Steam. I have played it recently. <laughs> oh, God. Um, I kind of need to look into that. I'm going to add it to my wish list right yeah. now. <laughs> but that, that's, that's, a, that's a good point, Will, because, you know, thinking about it, I, when I bought my used car a couple of years ago, it was funny. I, I went into the, I don't know what they're called, but the person who sits there and, like, has you sign everything and do all the financial paperwork, and I could see their computer screen, and they had a dot matrix printer, and they were tied into some very old Jeez. software. That's so and, funny you, you bring and, that up. Yeah, and, and so I was talking to her, and and she was like, "Oh, you're a software engineer. I bet you, I bet you, like, haven't seen something this old." And I'm like, "Yeah, why are you guys running a system that old?" And she goes, "It's like the national network or something like runs on this system, and it's so rock solid, and nobody wants to touch it because it's like 99 percent of car dealerships are using this system for wow. like titling, registration, licensing, finance, etc. So nobody wants to touch it. So she literally had a dot matrix printer." And it was like it was like a, a window on her PC running like I want to say MS DOS, probably even earlier than that. And it was just like that's the software they've been using. So yeah, having that system on a chip that makes sense. When when I got my Mazda, it was the exact same thing. I was walking through like you you talk to the the dealer, he goes and talks to his guy who talks to the boss or whatever. And in the waiting area, you can see into like where the financial room was, and you could just yeah. hear that dot matrix printer going. And I remember yeah. being like, why are they using this super old printer for this? And that's that's really funny wow. that you you actually got like a conversation out of it, which is interesting. But um, yeah, that's, that's crazy that's, to me. Um, yeah, the other thing, like 
emulators and all the virtual boxes I've ever tried, it's still so much like settings adjustments to make all that stuff work yep. and to just plug and play something like that. Um, it's crazy. The, the guys, um, diagnostics, uh, diagnostics, like plans and stuff are up on a website. So you can actually buy all the parts and just make it yourself. Uh, but I don't have that kind of knowledge. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait till this man sells them and pay him what he is owed. There you go. Um, folks, uh, we have, that's it for the news, which means we get to talk about the game awards and do some prediction stuff here. Um, yes, sorry. Uh, I, I was going to break the recording with him. Um, I have a, uh, games beat article here that has all of the stuff we know about all the things we know about. So we're going to go through this quick and then we're just going to make our crazy predictions. And then we're going to get the heck out of here so I can eat food i'm excited to do that so uh this article split into two categories which uh has entertainment which we don't care about and games which we do care about uh the only entertainment thing that seems cool is the halo tv show and the sonic, sonic two trailer two. and that's literally like the only thing i care about is the sonic trailer i haven't seen the sonic movie yet is it good Can yeah it's good. It? it's good okay it's, good. it's not great but hey, you know what yeah I just it's wish very you still looked like the video creepy. Game movie. I still wish you it looked like the of... creepy one. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, someone someone said that in the second one, Dr. Robotnik is going to try and create a robotic Sonic and it's going to look like oh, the original design of that's Sonic. That's good. The first movie. Yeah. Um, how, <laughs> how many minutes runtime do you think we get to see uh, Sonic stinky piggies? 40 feet? minutes? Yeah, 40 it's delicious, minutes. Yeah. delicious feet. <sighs> They gotta, they gotta sh at least show them, right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> gotta take them shoes off. Gotta take I, them red I assume they'll off. show them, and then the screen will just say "hand check," and everyone's gonna put their hands up. <laughs> and you hear wet and sloppy noises, and it cuts to the next morning. Oh, and then Idris, Idris Elba comes in. Yeah, and James Mars. Oh, that's just... right. I forgot he's knuckles. <laughs> I, I forgot Idris Elba's knuckles. Oh, oh my uh, god. Anyways, uh, so far, so now we move on to the games. Um, confirmed stuff. There's supposedly Sega showing off the new Sonic game, which uh, Ugh, who cares? Sonic Sonic sucks. is bad. Like, I'm just gonna say Sonic. The 2D Sonic games suck. And period. the Dreamcast, They're all the Dreamcast one is the only good 3D Sonic game. Uh, because there's whales. Uh, everyone loves whales. Um, Microsoft is gonna Whale announce come. new games for <laughs> Game Pass for PC. Uh, there is a new Aaron Flynn game. He is formerly of Bioware. Uh. A new game he directed at Improbable. I don't know who Improbable is. Um, Arc Raiders, new game from Embark Studios, which is Patrick Soderlund. Uh, and then uh, Saber Interactive World War Z developer plans to announce their new game. Uh, that World War Z game is really good. Uh, it's not really good. It's a solid game. I had a blast playing through that with my brothers. It is a third person Left 4 Dead. Uh, honestly, it might be better than Back 4 Blood uh i had a great it's not time that difficult. yeah it's not that difficult um <laughs> definitely check it out it might still be on game no offense <laughs> um so this is the speculation part because jeff Keeley, bless his little little heart um <sighs> his little corrupt heart that won't talk about activision he has promised four or five game reveals that are the equivalent in terms of excitement of to the elden. elden ring trailer that he showed at the summer game fest event in june um when he first Someone, <laughs> I'm, wait a minute i'm sorry Hold there's on. a sentence in here that says hellblade 2 from xbox game studios is an open secret at this point they announced that they showed off images of iceland didn't they yeah they announced that game that, that's been year. like a year or, yeah like a year or year and a half yeah senua saga they announced that what are you doing jeff grubb <laughs> Come on, Jeff Grubb. The 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 announcement on the uh, the what is it four four to five announcements on the level of Elden Ring. Someone someone on Reddit was like, "Yeah, I think this is sort of going to be like when they announced that Fast and Furious game, oh, and, it was, and it was like hot garbage." It was like, "Yeah, that's what they're talking about." Like these reveals oh, are going to be so good. There was that really that. weird like there was that really weird sexual tension between Vin oh Diesel God, and Michelle so Rodriguez. Strange. So weird. It was wild. And the Whooper oh, watches. Oh, Ugh. Yes! Hope they have them this year. <laughs> um, so I, I, I just want to start this off by saying, obviously one of those is whatever Kojima is doing. Um, that's just I a don't think solid so. lock. 
Death Solid I, Stranding. I, part of me wants to say it's too early, but the other thing was Death Stranding was being teased and eventually came out way too early compared to what people were thinking. So you you could be right, but my gut is telling me probably not. Yeah, Death yeah. Stranding, the game know. of the year for 2019, was teased very early. <laughs> Uh, and it's Jeff Keighley, so you know he worships at the and, altar of Kojima, so. and Kojima's on the the board. So will we be. see? Will we hear Chris Pratt's Mario voice? Ugh. Or Garfield? Ooh. So Garfield game? Breath of the Wild two? <laughs> no, um, they gotta save that for attendee. So. They gotta save yeah. that for attendee conference. Yeah, I think attendee conference where they're eating tendies, chicken tendies. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm Splatoon think- three. We could see some Splatoon three. Yeah, we though. could see some Splatoon three. But uh, this is like, because I there's a longer quote where he's like, "These are some of these games are games no one knows about. Like they're announcements. It's not like seeing. So that's where it's like hard to speculate. But I, like I don't even. I'm so bad at thinking of developers. I can't even think of someone. It's not going to be a From Software. I'm trying to think of my favorite games. I um, do you think so? We have we have a known segment for Xbox Game Pass for PC. Microsoft is announcing new games coming to Game Pass for PC, quote. Um, do you think Microsoft is going to announce a studio acquisition? They throw those they, out willy nilly. Are they? So they haven't. No, they did formally announce that Elder Scrolls six is going to be exclusive. Right? Yeah, I think I think they just did. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK. And then um, so I just want to say Starfield, though, I we think could they could show off Starfield. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the thing about Microsoft is that they're they are not as stringent to when they are announcing or showing things off. And Starfield has actually been showing and talking about it a lot recently in their dev blogs. It's not super secretive. So yeah. I could see some Starfield. Thinking My- Minecraft 2? <gasps> well, God, can you imagine what a Minecraft 2? Like, a, just take Minecraft, but put it on a better engine. Um, <laughs> I can see... Oh, boy. Oh man, what if Microsoft acquired the Valheim studio? That'd be cool. Oh, is there going to be new Valheim DC, DLC or Deep new Ro- Valheim Deep Rock Galactic 2? Uh, game's not that great, Will. I, what do you mean? It's pretty good. You just don't enjoy <laughs> games that you play. <laughs> yeah, it's fair point. <laughs> I'm not saying it's some masterpiece, but when you have a group of people playing together, it's a good game. Jackbox isn't fun by yourself. Um, I'm trying to think who's who's in the wind. Platinum, Platinum is in the wind a bit. Like, who are these oh, developers oh, that, that oh, have uh, a, uh, Bioshock. Yeah, Bioshock, Bioshock the yeah. the Antarctica one, but um, uh, which hasn't been announced yet. Right. The rumors. Rumors. Yeah. No, uh, the inside people play 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 dead play dead. I bet they'll announce oh. that the new flesh monster coming to studios we- near. This is a weird. This is a weird question. Have we had anything from Jonathan Blow in a while? After didn't Witness, he, uh, didn't he? Oh, Jonathan Blow. All right, I was thinking of. The I don't f- think so. I don't think we've had anything since Witness. I feel like maybe he could. Yeah. Surprise! I'm trying to think of like big I name like indie people. Who was who... the fee guy? Oh, he he quit game development, right? Because no, Fez. Then he, Fez, no, then he made Fez. Then he made a VR game, so I don't think he's actually out. Yeah, Jonathan Blow, I think could be could be an, an indie sort of. Hey, I'm working on this. Yeah, sort of thing. I'm d- I'm definitely seeing Bioshock. Do you think more any more flight simulator stuff? That's probably on the Xbox Maybe. Game Pass for PC because yeah. they, they they do still have the the Top Gun. Yeah, coming. They had delayed it. Yeah. Um. But, but yeah, I'm I see. Much. Honestly, I, I, I'm finding it hard to come up with crazy speculations because. These shows are typically two or three decent sized announcements and then good trailers with them. And then 99% of it is just no offense, but either like unknown minor indie stuff and advertising for yeah. for yeah. stupid games. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, like Ra- Rainbow Six Quarantine is going to be or Quarantine Parasite, whatever they're calling it now, oh, is going to be in that. here. <laughs> Hopefully it's not 25 minutes long like it was at E3, <laughs> but they're going to have a segment in here and it's going to be like, who cares? Whatever, you know. Um, do you think we could see something from Ken Levine's studio? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Ghost, ghost Story Games. I, the yeah. only thing I remember from that is like he did a talk like six or seven years ago and it was at, at the Dice Conference and he talked about doing a game 
doing a game with narrative Legos, which like yeah. is an interesting concept to talk about. And then I think he's just been either working. It's like it's like his version of Star Citizen. Like he's just been working on it for whenever <laughs> incrementally. <laughs> it's just like they never show, dollars, they so. never they never show anything for it. Yeah. But I mean, That's Take Two is still owns that company, so I don't know what they're doing. But. What do you it think the next two. big? What do you think the next big remake slash remaster announced at the Game Awards? Oh, um, Dead more Dead Space stuff. Oh, oh I can see that. You see some Dead Space. Yeah. yeah, they they were really cool with that behind the curtain stuff. They like after that announcement, they're like, "Oh, here's the physics stuff we've been doing with the with the monsters," and like showed yeah. all that off. That was really neat. I could definitely see yeah. that. Any Squid Game game? Official Squid Game game? All, all Roblox. Actually, all the Roblox actually, Squid Game games. Is Squid Game the new Battle Royale? Is this is this going to be the start? Of, put the, I, finally, I finally watched it. It's I, good. I it? Watched, it is good. It is good. It's very good. It good. Yeah. Um, I, it, I'm just really upset that, like, because of that game, all these kids are now playing Squid Game on the playground. Like, that's inappropriate. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah, uh, they got katanas and... Uh, Money. Yeah, like this, cool. that whole like red light, green light game that the kids are playing now because of Squid Game, inappropriate. <laughs> um, no, I was going to say um, ban video games. <laughs> ban playground games. Ban playground Oh, I was going to say, is Squid Game, this, this is my gamble. This is my gamble, okay? PUBG kicked off a Battle Royale craze. I think Squid Game is going to kick off a bunch of Squid Game games craze. And I think we may start to see a taste of it at this Game Awards. I'm predicting at least one Squid Game knockoff game. It gets would revealed or show. It would make sense to me to, at, at the very least, announce something like that. Like, hey, this yeah. is being worked on, and like show some concept art or something. That especially, that could make sense to me. Especially with Fortnite. Like, like the whole reason that Fortnite was popular was because Epic pivoted, they stole, and they released it immediately. And there's all these studios who, I mean, this is kind of the part of that's the right idea, which is if we're going to capitalize on this, we need to do it yesterday. And mm. so they're like squid game out now. Yeah. So I could, I could see that. Fall Guys that squid game DLC. Fall Guys. Ooh, that's, that's a good, that's a good. That's squid a good Guys. One. Squid Guys. Will we see any Netflix games? They did make that announcement. They have that Stranger Things game, right? Don't they? They do, yeah. They ba basically they pulled stuff into their own, their their existing games. They pulled it back into Netflix. But yeah, will we see the announcement of a new Netflix exclusive game? I Maybe. think so. I think I think that's a possibility. Do we think that there's going to be any? Star Wars games, like maybe oh. Fallen Fallen Order two, or more like Knights of the Old Republic remake stuff. I, that's I don't a know. good point. That's a good point. I could definitely see some Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was thinking about, will the word Stadia be said? <laughs> and I'm going to go with I'm going to go with no. No, way. I don't think anybody's going to nobody's going to say Stadia. It may show up on a little like available on PC, Xbox Stadia, but it will never be said. I'm will surprised they say Google Luna still says it. Absolutely Luna. not. <laughs> Do you think Greg Miller would tweet about playing games on Luna? <laughs> if you think Stadia is, is dead, have you heard of Luna? I feel like <laughs> I just I see tweets from him occasionally being like, I'm playing this on Luna. I'm like, man, what deal did you sign that you are stuck with for like another three months? <laughs> you talked about um the, the PlayStation Plus stuff sort of becoming the, the new version of Game Pass. And you were like everything but PS Vita. And it just reminded me, do, do you remember in like season two of House of Cards? Yes. There's like a very blatant PS Vita where Kevin Spacey, They're you know, playing. whatever. He's just like, is that a PS Vita? And it was like, <laughs> I love that PS Vita or whatever. I'm like, what is going on? It was so bad. I killed dogs. He was also like I'm playing. Also not sexual. This playing, show is like, terrible. <laughs> he was like playing Call of Duty in a one yeah, season yeah. two. And he yeah. was like, he was, his thumbs were like very like. Yeah. Playing, was, playing drums, drums on that thing. Yeah. <gasps> Guys, I just remembered. I'm looking at a tweet right here. From Stalker Official, Stalker Two, oh, Heart of Chernobyl, yeah. PC oh boy. Gamer. Oh boy! Soon that that is supposed to come out, I think, in March. So we could yeah. see some more of Stalker Two. I can totally yeah. see so that. There was part of me. That's another game series. When they announced Stalker Two, I was like, should I 
play some stalker game because i played through stalker one they are stalker i really enjoyed they're, they're good they're just they're very intensive where it's like you really really got to stick with it and then it clicks and that's yeah. why i've tried to play them but i always bounce off after a couple hours i'm ready for stalker the mods too. are really good for it but yeah i'm ready for oh, stuff yeah. i kind of want to do like a bingo card for for tomorrow and it, however many times someone says the word groundbreaking and then however many oh. times someone say the word uh nft blockchain or, oh, or crypto. That, that's a good point i like, that's the other thing is is nft blockchain is the new battle royale everybody has oh, to do it yeah. and say it yeah i oh. forgot was it last year two years ago that we did the bingos for uh, I, was two, I, I think we've done it the last two years at least yeah or was it summer's game fest we did a bingo as well I think we did a bingo for that as well. That's fun. I I honestly wish we were streaming it just to hang out and like do stuff. But guys, gonna make those green dollars. I'm sorry, folks. Another breaking. I'm about to read something to you. This is with Tweeter, Command Online, Resourcing Online, Homeworld Three Online, December 9th, 2021, the Game Awards. We're gonna see Homeworld Three. I'm excited. You guys like Homeworld? I've never played it. It looks fun. They're great. You should play the Homeworld 1 remaster. It's really good. Um, fantastic RTS. Just really, really good RTS. I do like good RTS. So, um, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, just because we could do this all day. And I am hungry. And OBS keeps saying, and code are overloaded. And I don't want it to crash and lose all of this Overwatch. beautiful, beautiful thing. Overwatch 4. <laughs> They're just skipping it. Overwatch. 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 Oh, I wish I could play it. Uh, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully the thing's not funny right now. Um, we, uh, this is pre-recorded, but this weekend there are no streams unless Kyle decides to stream or Jake wants to stream. Uh, but next Tuesday we've got some Pokemon Will coming back. Uh, I'm going to be playing a lot more. I'm going to start at 7, you know, just get three hours in. Oh yeah, Christmas oh, stuff's yeah. good. Um, uh, losing everything. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at uh, at <laughs> Submixel Team. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Gibson. You can find Kyle on Twitter at Kyle the Beard. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt Two Seventy. Um, you can find all of our content at SubpixelFilms.com. Just do it, do it, and we will see you all next week. Play Tribes Ascend. Bye.